Welcome to the Roboticist Chronicles, an ARC Specialties podcast, where we get into the nuts and bolts of robots, automation, and the implications of an evolving machine workforce. Hello, this is Dan Alford with ARC Specialties, and you're listening to the Roboticist Chronicles podcast. My guest today is Jackson Baker. Welcome, Jackson. Hey, Dan. My name is Jackson. I'm a sophomore mechanical engineering major. Uh, I'm the this year's chief engineer for the Society of Automotive Engineers Baja team. Um, I was an old intern at Dan's. I'm interning at NASA this summer, and I'll be working with uh, Rafa Racing as well. All sorts of stuff. So how do we meet? It was it was a party, right? Yes, yes. So um, at a race shop, as I recall. Yeah, I I had the blessing of uh, meeting Craig McCormick through kind of an interesting method, but. Um, I worked with him all throughout that last semester, and uh, I got to meet you at the Christmas party at the, uh, just with all the racing guys. And- so it's a group of people, we all amateur racers and run together, and, and, and Craig and I race, and uh, Craig's got a huge race shop, and how many cars you got in there? Uh, I think we just got a new one. I think we're at 10 or 11 now. He got a, uh, a 90s Indy car in there for one of his other buddies, but yeah, it's a slew of a really amazing cars and that's the problem with amateur racing it's uh it requires just as much maintenance as any other form of racing and, and that's how craig uh was employing you right to oh yeah keep, keep these things running yep i'm his little minion uh just run around getting this experience uh just wrenching designing stuff where i can and uh it's a really fun gig he's taught me a lot so i really appreciate him yeah i, I met you and about a half hour later i think i hired you yeah it was it was pretty fast i mean i I was actually coming into the uh, into the winter break, and I'm like, man, I'm so glad that I get a break now, and I get <laughs> life gets to slow down and everything like that. And then Dan came to me with a job, and I was like, yeah, I can't not take this. And uh, it was a really, really amazing opportunity, so I really appreciate it. So you were doing uh, mechanical assembly for me, or what, what all did you? You were building robots, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I was kind of all over the place. So I first started working out with the uh, with the mechanics and breaking your taps and drills. Oh, yeah, I remember that. that yeah. Uh, so just having fun breaking stuff. And then uh, I got to work with the electricians a lot. So just a lot of learning, uh, like a me- mechanical assembly diagrams and electrical assembly diagrams. That was a very new uh, thing for me because I've always been on the design side of things. And then I started mocking up uh, just customer pieces and CADs so we could uh, do weld paths. Uh, with the uh, robots and everything like that, and I got to play around with uh, with John a little bit doing the weld paths that he was John doing. Martin, another racer, robot engineer. Oh yeah, yeah. So John and I had knew each other pretty well going into it. Um, but yeah, I got to do that, and then uh, at the tail end of things, I got to work with the machinists a little bit and just kind of shadow them and watch the uh, watch all the cool stuff over there. So, and the point of this is that you're going to be an engineer, right? Mechanical. Yes. So and so you you're studying mechanical engineering at A M College Station, Texas, correct? Yep. And, and I'm I'm a huge fan of engineers that actually know how to put stuff together on their own, and and that's why we offered you the intern job. Yeah. So at um during my year in Baja, I uh, like very design focused guy and back up. What do you mean? You were in the you're on the oh, peninsula. Yes. Yeah, so oh, on, you weren't on the peninsula. On the uh, on the S A E Baja team. What um, what is that? Uh, it's a like a student run um, kind of race team where we design and build a car over the course of a year. And then we do a wheel to wheel endurance race, four hour wheel to wheel endurance race. And then we have like acceleration events, hill climb events, rock crawl. So it's just off road racing. Uh, super, super fun time. This, this, the Society of Automotive Engineers puts this on every year. And yes. All, how many schools in the U.S. are competing? It's... Um, I think it's somewhere. Uh, a little bit around 150 maybe for Baja. Uh, we had 108 at this year's competition in Williamsport. So, I mean, it was super, super chaotic. A lot of cars smoking up on the on the track and everything like that. Uh, tech inspection was just super, super crazy, getting the car to pass tech. And then, um, you know, in the pits, everything is super fast. So what do you have to build? You have to build everything, right? The frame? Yes. So I was on the gearbox, but we start, uh, everything is done in-house um, using a three-axis CNC and then lathe and everything like that. Uh, just whatever we can find in the uh, machine shop. What motor did you use? Um, so we're given a, a Kohler CH440, I think is what it's called. 
Uh, it's just a little 10 horsepower go kart motor. So, two stroke, four stroke. Uh, it's a four stroke. So, I mean, it's nothing exciting, but I think that's what makes the competition so cool is we're given such a bare bones, like pretty lame motor. And then we have to get the car to do pretty amazing things, climbing like 60 degree inclines and a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Uh, so it, I, me being on the gearbox side of things, that was my big thing was determining the ratio to like climb these very steep inclines and very, uh, kind of like intense, extreme, like course elements and everything like that. So, uh, that was my priority. And then just a lot of optimization side on that too, with the gearbox, which I really, really enjoyed. Did it break? It actually, it was fine. It was, it ran really, really well. Uh, we sheared our CV joints in the first 10 laps, so that kind of sucked. And then we burned out clutch plates in our uh, front differential. I mean... So this is a four-wheel drive vehicle you built? Yes, yes. Four-wheel drive required. They have a like a little test and tech inspection, so you have to climb out of this uh, ditch where the back tires are put on rollers. And so uh, it's you got to get the front wheels to kind of climb out for you. Excellent. So was this a multi-speed gearbox you built? Uh, it was just a, it was one speed, but it was a like dual reduction or double reduction in the, um, in the shafts or the shaft layout, just because, I mean, you need a whole bunch of torque to, um, like climb up these inclines and everything like that. So I think we were starting out, the engine output was somewhere around 18 and a half foot pounds of torque. Uh, after our CVT, we were getting maybe like 45 foot pounds of torque. And at the wheels, we were getting 410 foot-pounds of torque, like with inefficiencies factored in and everything like that. I think probably realistically somewhere around uh, 460 to 470 foot-pounds of torque if everything was working properly and ideally. So uh, it was like just a huge reduction through that gearbox. So uh, what was your clutch? Was it centrifugal or manual? Uh, it was centrifugal on the, uh, it sat on the secondary of the CVT and then we just tuned it with a whole bunch of springs and everything like that. This is why I'm such a huge fan of this because you guys had to build the frame, build the gearbox, put it all together. And if it failed, you, you just got to sit there while the other, all the other teams ran, but yours, yours ran. So I, th I think that's such practical, uh, knowledge that you're gaining from that. I, I think it's huge. Yeah. It transformed me as an engineer. Like I came in. Um, I didn't know, like I knew a little, little bit of CAD and, um, that was pretty much it. I came in with absolutely no, uh, experience really. And, um, just being able to have a part and see it all the way through to completion and then have it get beat to hell in a competition is just, it's something you can't really get anywhere else. And it's, it was super, super special and a lot of great experience from that. So if there's any kids listening and you're going to college and you're not on either the Formula SAE team or the Formula ba or the uh, SAE Baja team, I recommend you consider it. Uh, uh, I've told the story many times, but one of my best friends that works at NASA, and he says that the reason he got his job at NASA is all the kids had a 4.0, all of them had a, a mechanical engineering degree, but he had Formula SAE on his resume, and he's been working there for almost 30 years now. So it. I mean, people like me, we look for this on resumes. So you think you're having fun, but I think you're building up your resume. It's definitely a little bit of both. I remember at the competition, I had uh, just this random guy. He was staying, standing around looking at a car and everything like that. Nobody was talking to him. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go up and talk to him. And we ended up talking for about two hours. And he offered me a job at SpaceX after that. <laughs> so I was like, I'll, I couldn't accept it because I'm already i already signed up for this summer. But uh, he's got me like fast forwarded through the interview process uh for like next summer and everything like that but uh yeah i mean it's it was a it's a huge career building opportunity and it's also just a blast being on a racing team so oh, absolutely nothing there's no downsides to it really other than the fact that you have absolutely no life outside of it <laughs> so uh uh yeah how did y'all finish you got 108 teams and how did you do yes so we got uh, 18th overall and then we placed fourth in design overall so that was our like big claim to fame the powertrain got a perfect score on the design presentation well done. I'm really really happy about that um, and then we got 10th in hill climb we got 17th in acceleration uh, 25th in the endurance race 31st in maneuverability and 36th in the suspension and traction event so I think it's the best that any a team has ever done and 
I mean, I'm really proud of our team, but as the chief engineer for next year, I have very, very high expectations. I think we have a lot of really, really good people who are coming in and I'm ready to use like experiences from this year, what I did uh, wrong and kind of stuff that I can learn from and take it in next year, teach the new guys and really, really build a, an amazing car. So you got a promotion, huh? Oh, yes, yes. Um, if anybody out there is willing to uh, uh, to donate to our team, I would very, very much appreciate it. Um, it's just, it is a huge uh, career building opportunity for these engineers that get to do this. Um, and it, uh, like, just for like it did for me, it'll transform them as an engineer and make them into a person that you really, really want in the workplace. So how is it you're going to be chief engineer next year? What happened? Did you lose a bet? Uh <laughs> I mean, I, I'm usually not a big fan of just taking managerial positions like that, um, but I wouldn't want to take away somebody else's role in a design spot. I was one of the few people who had like carryover because a, a lot of the people on our team, it, they're juniors. And so the juniors often go to the senior level formula team. And so we end up with maybe four or five people from last year's team. And so it was kind of expected of me to step into that role and to lead the uh, the new team and kind of like usher in a new car in that sense. So that, and then I also want to see, um, I want to see the car in a broader aspect. Uh, I was very, very gearbox focused this year. And if you asked me about the suspension or the chassis on the car, I could give you pretty like surface level answers, but I couldn't really go into depth about it like a lot of the other guys could so i just kind of want to see a lot more of the car this year now that you have uh, hindsight to look at what would you have changed on this year's car oh man so much um so a lot of the trouble in designing this year came from the bevel gears we integrated our transfer case into our gearbox so it was one assembly and that made it extremely difficult to work on um, and manufacturing bevel gears in the first place is a very, very difficult process. You were cutting your own gear? Uh, no. Gears and splines were the only thing we outsourced. Okay. But in finding somebody to outsource, because nobody wants to cut bevel gears, it's just such a like pain in the ass. To have. This is for the differential that you had the bevels? Uh, no, this is for our transfer case. So we did a fully locked transfer case, um, and just with the four-wheel drive required, having a drive shaft, we needed some way to get that 90-degree power transfer. Um, that, And then we also ran a very, very large ratio in our differential. We were running a 4.33 to 1 ratio. And so we had a uh, reduction ratio in our first gear set, and then we had our bevel gears connected in that on that intermediate shaft. And we actually had to reduce our torque before we were going into the... Um, into the differential in order to get that 50-50 split front to rear. So it's just an efficient system right there. Um, but the main thing is just making my stuff more manufacturable. All the manufacturing people on this year's team will flip me off every single time they see me because my stuff was a pain in the ass to design or to manufacture and to cut. Well, every time I work on a, in a car from Detroit, I curse the engineers that design it. So hopefully you won't be one of them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely learned the hard way this year. Uh, our gearbox was completed. The manufacturing was done maybe two weeks before competition. So I think I had several consecutive all-nighters getting it assembled and getting the gears aligned properly. Um I don't want to do that, and that was a pretty bad experience. There were a lot of expletives thrown, and a lot of tools thrown, and uh, that was not a fun part of it. But but it never broke. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still intact. <laughs> we were leaking a lot of oil. We <laughs> we were laughed at for the amount of oil that we were leaking, and we had to come into the pits several times to refill the, refill the gearbox oil. Um, but nothing ever broke. So what happened to the seals? Okay, what, what went wrong on your seals? See. That's the thing is they didn't exist. We didn't know shaft seals were a thing going into this. <laughs> and we had no sponsorship for one anyway. So we used a bearing compound instead, and it just did not work the way it was intended. Well, that is a lesson you'll remember forever. Oh, yes, yes. Shaft seals, not be uh, no bearing compound. That is something I will really, really kind of mm -hmm. hark on for next year's gearbox team no that's a good thing for you know you need to know all the options i used to race a formula v car and it didn't have a, a, a lip seal that had a labyrinth seal 
you know, so that's what a good engineer knows is is all the different options they have. Yep. So you need to explore labyrinth seals, but I don't recommend them. <laughs> well, that's that's fun. So are you a rising senior? Um, I'm a rising junior. Junior. So you got two more years. So the, your last year, you're going to do the 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 formula the car formula team. Yes. So that's actually what brought me to A and M. Um, that was my goal from the start. When I was applying at colleges, I was looking around at the teams that were doing well, that were winning. And the 2021 uh, SAE Formula car for A&M won first place. And I was like, it's right there, just an hour half away from my house. I've got to go to this school and i got to do that. Isn't it true that this this whole Formula SAE started at UT Austin? Then? Oh, I have no idea. Uh, that's that's it, a rumor. It is, then they're, they're a little brother in that sense because, I mean, our teams are beating their teams, so... Don't be mean now. <laughs> Too much fun. So you got two more years to go. And then uh, what's the perfect job? Two years from now, you get out of school, you get what job? Man, I mean, I so I came into engineering uh, because I wanted to be an automotive engineer. That's what kind of drove me. Um, but getting into it and getting to do the stuff that I've done so far, I just realized that I love design. Um and I'm getting to work in a lot of like aerospace and space exploration uh, kind of fields right now. So I think do, having some sort of design and optimization role in one of those uh, space exploration fields would be my goal. Either that or, I mean, like race engineering is always still on the table there for me too. I I love it. I love the environment. Just being out there on race weekends is so much fun. So either one of those is definitely like the goal that I'm working towards right now. So, are you a driver? Are you did you did you try out to drive this vehicle? Um, I did not. Uh, we so we had a driver. He drove. Um, he drives in the three hundred cc motocross class, but he drives a two hundred fifty cc bike in it, and he places well consistently. So, uh, we had our driver. He had driven last year, and I just couldn't take it away from him. And uh, I don't know if the spot is going to be vacant this year or not. I have a little bit of driving experience. Uh, but we're really trying to get people who have wheel-to-wheel off-road experience in there uh, just because it's a very unique car. And it, the teams that do and don't have a professional driver, you can really, really see it in their um, results. So, I mean, I'm like as much fun as it would be to drive the car. Um, you want to win. I, yeah, exactly. I, I'm I'm very much a results-first kind of guy. So that's what I'm looking for is that win, that taking home a trophy. So when you do the formula essay, so that, that you get out of the dirt and onto the asphalt, right? Yes, very very big change. Um, even no so longer four wheel drive. Oh yeah, even so in the rules too. Um, so the the rules change in the sense that the engine you can pick is completely open. You just have to keep it under seven fifty cc's and it can't be boosted. So I feel like that introduces a whole new world of what you can do with the car there, um, and that's. So it'll be triple the horsepower you're used to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, you do have to restrict the intake a little bit, so just so people aren't dying all the time in these events. But uh, it's a very, very intense race car, and um, it's going to be a hell of a time figuring out what to do with it. Hmm. You know, when I was racing in Texas World way back in the day, the kids that was right by A&M, and the kids would come over. Uh, they were on the SAE team, and they were looking at our car. And we're running a uh, a swing axle. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a horrible design. And uh, <laughs> that's the one that Nader said was unsafe at any speed. But we'd figured out a way to make make it go pretty well with these uh, formula cars. But the kids were uh, looking at the swing axle design. I go, don't, 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 don't do that. But <laughs> but that, that, that was their, one of their resources to come out the track. And I encourage them to go look at the Atlantics and some of the other formula cars. But yeah, uh, great program. So A&M. You still like it? I so I actually came in and I was I I came from a UT family so oh, really I was very against the whole A and M thing. There's quite a rivalry for anybody that's listening in here in Texas. That, that's the that's the big rivalry. And then y'all are gonna start playing football again this yes, year, right? We play them at home this year, and I cannot wait for that game. The tickets are already shooting through the roof in price, so. Uh, but I got my spot, and I'm really, really excited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, coming from a uh, UT family into a and I was really hesitant. It's a very, very, like, culty mentality over there, as uh, a lot of people have heard. The the stereotypes are very true at A&M, but the people are just incredible. Everybody is very, very kind. They have a very strong Catholic community there, which I really appreciate. 
that and the network is just absolutely insane. I've been very blessed to have the opportunities that I've had uh, this past year, and a lot of that comes from the A&M network and what's that, what that's done for me. So I am eternally thankful for that network. It's tough to get in A&M nowadays, isn't it? Um, into their engineering program a little bit. Uh, I didn't, it, it was always kind of like a backup option for me as I was applying to colleges and everything like that. Cause I mean, I wasn't taking it too seriously, me being a UT guy, but when I didn't get into UT, I got into a and I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to a and now. <laughs> no regrets. I mean, you're going to end up with a, you know, good degree, a good training and a, and a huge, um, resource in the form of, uh, other Aggies running around Texas. Cause it's one of the. One of the two big, well, one of the several big engineering schools. Oh, yeah. I actually have a story off of that, too. So when I had gotten my first NASA internship for last summer, uh, the way I got it is I, I had nothing going into the summer come spring break, and I got on an airplane uh, coming back into Houston, and we were like the last people to board. So I sat down next to this random guy, opened my phone, and I had a whole bunch of like A&M classwork pulled up because I was studying for tests. And he looks over and he's like, oh, wow, like I went to A&M too. And I did engineering there too. So I get to talk in and he worked. Did he hire you? Oh, well, oh, not yet. <laughs> that seems to be a recurring thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, so it was it was his brother who hired me. Oh, well, no. he, yeah, he works at Jacobs Engineering. Yep. And he was trying to get me in there for the longest time. And he's like, well, uh, my brother over at NASA, he's got a couple open spots uh, for his internships. And so you should go in. I uh, hit him up and like ask him if he is able to take on another one. And I was like, oh yeah, NASA, that's that's okay. I'll, I might take that. Uh, so yeah, I was super, super excited about the opportunity. And it was a really awesome community over there. So I really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited about going back this year. And you're working on Argos this year. Uh, I'm working with a, a subsystem of Argos. Which is? So Argos only offloads the, oh, for context, by the way, um, Argos is kind of an astronaut training equipment. Uh, and it's like a gantry system with a harness that offloads the weight of the astronaut. So it can simulate microgravities for the astronauts to train in, but it does not offload their arms. And so when they're working with tools, they still have the full weight of the tool and the weight of their arm kind of like loading down, loading them down. So what I'm doing is I'm making an active offload system for the arms. Uh, and it's kind of where you have IMUs all over the arm. and It's an IMU. Uh, it's just a, a positional sensor, and it sends data to a motor, and based on the position of the arm, it offloads a certain amount of weight for the arm. So yeah, it's a very, very cool piece of technology, and I can't wait to get into it. So let's just simulate zero Gs. Why not just put them in the swimming pool? I thought that's how they did it. Um, So that's the big debate. Those two, Argos and the um, the neutral buoyancy lab, are always at each other's throat to which one's better and which one's not. And there's there's certain pros and cons to uh, to each of them, and they go back and forth all the time. But uh, just having all sorts of options, I think, is kind of the best route for where Johnson Space Center is at right now. Talk about small world. Guess where I visited last week? I, I saw the Argo simulator. Oh, yeah. I got to play with it, you know, with the zero gravity mode. And, and I was there with two other racers, Josh and Richard, so you'll, you'll feel right at home. Oh, yes, yes. I can't. So I didn't know Josh and Richard uh, back when I was there last year, but this year um, I'll be working very close to them. So, I mean, that'll be super cool to know them already and be working real close to them. So I'm sure I'll get to know them even better over the cross of this summer. I guess the moral of the story is if you're sitting there playing on your phone, instead of getting out and mis- visiting people, you wouldn't have all these opportunities. But you get out there, you visit people, and it's worked out extremely well for you. And here you are, you're, what, 17? Uh, I mean, 20. 20, I mean, so 20 years old, and yet you had jobs at NASA, jobs with a, a, a robot company, and and uh, working on race teams. I, I uh, carry a rabbit's foot on me at all oh, times. Oh, no, you're making your own luck, <laughs> is, is my point. And that's why I tell kids nowadays, you got to get out and make your own luck. And you're certainly doing it. Yeah, I mean, I've been blessed with the all, all the opportunities that I've uh, been given. And I, I've just, it, part of it beca- comes from the fact that I've just been surrounded by a lot of no, you surround yourself. Yes, that that too, that too. Too much fun. Well, I'm I'm really you know looking forward to next year. You got to come back. Uh, doesn't sound like you need an intern job this time, but I, I do want to hear how the uh, Formula Baja goes with you as chief engineer. Hopefully, better. Oh yes, yeah. I'll. I mean, 
it's your team is always as good as its weakest link and so it's really going to come down to the guys who are working under me and who I get to work with uh, on the team this year and if they just are hammering down and get on getting on their stuff and we ask a lot on the Baja team for those students because being a student and building a car uh, at the same time that's a very very tall task and so uh, just kind of I, but I think we have a lot of really, really good guys on our team going into next year. So I'm really, really excited to see what we can do. So you have a website. Let's say somebody's listening and they actually want to donate. And what do you need? You need materials. You need money. Do you need machine shop work? What do you need? Um, so on the machining side of things, we actually lose points if we outsource uh-huh. uh, machining. So we try to do everything that we can do in-house. Uh, but money and materials is a huge, huge thing for us. So, I mean, if anybody is willing to offer us help, so I what's your really website? Appreciate. Or how, how do they find you? So, I will actually send the information to you after this, if that's okay. Uh, we haven't set up our official website for this year's team yet. Um, so, just getting kind of getting out all that stuff sorted out because we had just gotten back from competition. As soon as that stuff is set up, I'll let you know. Very good. And how many kids are on this team? I saw the photo. It looked like at least 25 of you guys. I think we have 32, 32. as a team. We have some 25, 26 designers and then a couple of machinists and then a couple more people on our business team. Business team. What's yes. that? Um, I'm not entirely sure. That's their own kind of their own little world. Um, you were hitting me up for money last time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that we were kind of in that position last year is, we just kind of didn't get the money that we were expecting, and so we were in the red really, really early on. What'd you spend to build this car? Uh, I think it was nineteen grand, which is probably one of our cheaper cars that we've built at AM. Mm-hmm. Um, I know last year they did uh, like a thirty-five thousand dollar car, and then you show up to comp, and some people have full titanium chassis <laughs> and uh, uprights. Oh yeah, um, I, one of the teams I talked to, they had $80,000 in manufacturing costs that was fully sponsored. And I think they said their car as a whole was over 150 grand. So oh, wow. it's that's, a that's pro level. Oh yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, some of it is a money game, but good engineering can outdo money for sure. I mean, we saw it. Yeah. You got fourth stage. place in design on a, on a shoestring budget. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, well played. I'm super excited about it. I was really, really, really pumped to see it. What did I miss? What did you want to cover that I didn't get to? Um, well, I mean, just as far as it goes, uh, just people to thank. I want to thank my mom and dad. Obviously, they've done a great job raising me. Uh, I think I'm an all right kind of da- kind of guy. So I know are you? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I want to I want to thank Craig McCormick as well. Uh, just meeting him last year, uh, he introduced me to a lot of really really great people. He's done a lot of really great things for me. A lot of just stuff teaching me and um, just he's been a great influence on my life. And then obviously Dan, I want to thank you. Uh, you've done a lot for me as well, and I really really appreciate the things that you've. Uh, been able to teach me and the experiences you've been able to give me. It's been our pleasure. All right. All right. So uh, go build another car, come back, and uh, I need another report next year. Yes, sir. I got you. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Thank you.